As we know, Order 66 was the order given by Emperor Palpatine just after the death of Mace Windu, and the transformation of Anakin into Darth Vader. The order was programmed into the clones' heads by way of an inhibitor chip, which controlled their minds to take out the Jedi and serve the Chancellor. The rest of the events that led from this are what we know today. But what if we go into another timeline, an alternate universe, and one that I think makes much more sense in some ways? What if Order 66 failed? Jedi have decades of training, mastering the Force above all else. Their first and foremost abilities were to be able to sense their surroundings and feel any threats, such as when Anakin and Obi-Wan could even feel the Kuhans that attempted to poison Padme. The Jedi not being able to sense the complete 180 turn of the clones, raising their guns at them and firing, would have been enough of a shift in the Force just as Yoda had felt in order for them to escape or to have an advantage to fight back harder. The Jedi Temple events, however, would continue to play out the way they did, as Anakin was too powerful for any Jedi in the temple. He would then go to Mustafar as ordered, while the rest of the clones would continue to take out the Jedi, slowly being killed one by one by more advancing Jedi. Plo Koon would still be alive, so would Sakura, Kiadi Mundi, Sindrelig, and the list goes on. Of course, not every Jedi would live. The clones were a formidable force. However, the more powerful and more force-attuned ones would sense the matter immediately. After Anakin was ordered to Mustafar by Palpatine, Yoda would meet Obi-Wan at the raided Jedi Temple, and they would send a beacon out to all of the survivors of Order 66, where we would essentially see almost the entire Jedi Council returning, with the exception of Anakin Skywalker, of course, who is now Darth Vader. We have to remember this doesn't give Palpatine enough time to leave the city, as all of these events took only a few hours at the most to execute. He wouldn't have heard back from the commanders because one, they'd all be dead, and two, he'd assumed they were all still carrying out orders. Yoda would send Obi-Wan and Plo Koon to Mustafar to seize and capture Anakin to be tried in the Galactic Court, while he would take Kiadi Mundi, Sindrelig, and Aelis Secura to confront the Emperor while the remaining Jedi would dissipate to hunt down as many clones as they could. After telling Padme about what Anakin has done, he and Plo would sneak onto her ship until they landed on the fiery planet. Yoda and the Masters would fly to the Chancellor's office in Coruscant to once and for all bring an end to the Sith Lord who had been right under their very noses for so many years. As Padme's ship landed, she stepped out to meet Anakin when he looked up to see Obi-Wan and Plo Koon standing in the opening of the ship's extended plank. Their silhouettes almost godlike as the light cast a shadow illuminating their outline, embossed in the red blaze of the red bubbling lava. Anakin yelled at Padme, choking her, until Plo, who was much more quick to stop this in Obi-Wan, jumped in the air and shot Force Judgment onto Anakin. This was Plo's equivalent to Sith Force Lightning. However, not as powerful, it still hurt Anakin enough to stop his attack on Padme. As he let go, she stumbled backwards and ran up to Obi-Wan. This angered Vader even more. The betrayal he felt was compounded only with hatred he couldn't even compare to the heat of the planet's melting core. As he ignited his lightsaber in unison to Obi-Wan and Plo, the battle began. Sidious frowned at Yoda as he watched his royal red guards fall to the floor. Yoda and the three Jedi Masters entered his office, all igniting their lightsabers. Palpatine tried to escape, knowing he was no match for three Masters and Grand Master Yoda. With no exit strategy, he turned to face them, telling Yoda, Your arrogance blinds you, Master Yoda, and ignited his lightsaber. He attempted the same strategy as he had with Mace and his legions of Masters, thrusting his saber into Sakura's heart as she laid on the floor motionless. His speed was far too ferocious for them. Yoda jumped off the wall and flipped to block Palpatine's attack on Kiadi Mundi, who went to strike Palpatine's head but missed and got paralyzed by a jolt of Force Lightning. As he withered on the floor, Yoda watched as Drelig's head rolled next to him. He was astounded by Palpatine's speed and precision, swinging as fast as he could and blocking just as hard. The two were evenly matched, as Yoda sent Palpatine flying back with a strong Force push using this time to run to Ki-Adi, who started to regain his consciousness once again. Helping him up, the two Jedi Masters ran towards Sidious. Anakin and Obi-Wan exchanged immense hits while Plo attacked when he could. His lightsaber abilities were amazing, 
but he was not on the same level as Anakin here. As they continued to fight down the corridor and into the station, Anakin could feel himself being cornered by the two Jedi Masters, Obi-Wan from the left and Plo from the right. Anakin was boxed in. Front flipping over Plo Koon, he landed attempting to strike him, however, he was stopped by Obi-Wan. When Plo used this advantage to shoot the most powerful amount of force judgment onto Anakin as he possibly could, Skywalker dropped to the ground, shrieking in agony as yellow thunderbolts crawled up his face, body, and bones like spiders with daggers for legs. Kenobi and Koon stepped over him, lightsabers an inch from his skull. They unanimously announced, In the name of the Galactic Senate of the Republic, you are under arrest. Palpatine had to decide quickly which Jedi he would advance to as ki Adi mundi and Yoda rushed him. He knew Yoda was far more powerful, so he decided to take out the weaker opponent first, that being Mundi. This is what Yoda anticipated. Quickly running up to Palpatine and flipping over him, Palpatine became confused and blocked ki Adi's attack, then turned to block Yoda's when he was cut in half by the Grand Master. Laying on the floor, unable to move, his fate had taken the same turn of events as his apprentice, Darth Maul. With Obi-Wan and Plo returning to the temple as Anakin sat in the back of the ship, cuffed at the hands and feet, they went to the Chancellor's office as they saw lights flashing from within the windows. Meeting Yoda at the docking bay, he and ki Adi boarded the ship to take Padme to a droid crew to deliver her unborn children. Anakin would remain restrained as his yellow eyes stared in hatred at the Jedi Masters who tried to figure out what to do with him. Banishing him from the Council and the Temple, stripping him of his Jedi status, the Galactic Senate appointed Bail Organa as Chancellor and moved to sentence Anakin to spend an eternity in prison. Once the security footage of the massacres at the Temple, including the slaughter of the younglings, were presented. Padme would survive, and her children, Luke and Leia, would be trained from infancy in the Jedi Temple with Yoda, Obi-Wan, ki Adi mundi Plo Koon, and subordinate Jedi who had survived as well. The galaxy would live in peace and harmony, with two new Skywalkers eventually growing up to carry on the Jedi way. Until Anakin would be freed from jail by the hands of Jar Jar. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to do a part two where Anakin somehow gets out of jail. The Jar Jar part was of course a joke, but if you'd like to see that, let me know down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this new style of making fan fictions. This is actually an older fan fiction, one of my oldest ones, done in December of 2016. So back when the channel wasn't even four months old or so. So forgive me if the story is a little bit weird, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's a relic in time, that's for sure, it's an artifact. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the style. I will see you in the next one. And until then, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, remember, the Force will be with you always.